In this class, we've talked about a variety of different vitamins. One large category of vitamins, of water-soluble vitamins, are B vitamins, and a subset of these are important for supporting metabolism. In this video, we're gonna describe what a cofactor is and how it supports enzyme function, and then which cofactors are associated with B vitamin supplementation. We're gonna then identify what enzymes require B vitamin-dependent cofactors for function. We're gonna go through an example and describe what would be the consequences of a vitamin deficiency using our knowledge of metabolic pathways to understand how a deficiency can result in a pathophysiology. So let's start with what is a cofactor? A cofactor is a non-protein chemical that helps with the catalysis of a particular enzyme. That means for a reaction to occur, you have to have not only the substrates available, but you also need to have the cofactor available to help facilitate that reaction to occur. Here's an example on the right, succinate dehydrogenase. It catalyzes the reaction where succinate is converted into fumarate, while at the same time ubiquinone is converted into ubiquinol. As part of this process, an electron has to be transported from succinate onto ubiquinone, and this requires an electron carrier molecule called FADH, which serves as a cofactor for the succinate dehydrogenase reaction. What that means is if you are limiting in the FADH, you're not going to be able to effectively convert succinate into fumarate and ubiquinone into ubiquinol. So which vitamins are cofactors? There's a large number of minerals that can serve as cofactors, iron, zinc. However, those are gonna be covered in a different video. In this video, we're gonna focus on vitamin-dependent cofactors. As you can see, a large number of B vitamins can be converted into chemicals that can serve as cofactors. So in the previous example, we talked about FAD. It comes from a vitamin called riboflavin, or vitamin B2. It's converted in our bodies to flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. And it's critical for the reaction of certain dehydrogenases, such as succinate dehydrogenase on the previous slide. Another example is thiamine. Thiamine is converted in our bodies to thiamine pyrophosphate, which is a cofactor for another class of enzymes. So let's go through one example of an enzyme, what it does, and what happens if a vitamin that is required as a cofactor is deficient. Pyruvate dehydrogenase, abbreviated here as PDH, is the gateway to the TCA cycle. This is the way by which glucose is converted completely into carbon dioxide and energy, and it is critical for essential function, because without PDH, aerobic metabolism of glucose isn't possible, and therefore you're very limited in the amount of energy you can extract from glucose. Pyruvate dehydrogenase catalyzes a complicated reaction, starting with pyruvate, finishing with acetyl-CoA. It also involves transfer of electrons through a whole variety of systems. The activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase actually requires a large number of cofactors, as you can see here, TPP, coenzyme A, FAD, and NADH, all of which are vitamin-derived, are required for the activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase. So deficiencies in any of those vitamins or cofactors can impair the ability of pyruvate dehydrogenase to convert pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. We're going to focus, though, on thiamine deficiency, which is important for TPP as a cofactor. There's two major diseases associated with thiamine deficiency, beriberi and Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. In both of these, there's a physiological deficiency in vitamin B1, resulting in an inability to make thiamine pyrophosphate. This thiamine pyrophosphate is a cofactor for PDH, as well as several other enzymes, including alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and branched-chain ketoacid dehydrogenase, important for amino acid metabolism. So there's a couple of different causes. Beriberi is quite straightforward. It's a dietary deficiency in thiamine. You're eating a diet that does not have sufficient amounts of thiamine, and therefore your body doesn't have sufficient thiamine. In the case of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, abbreviated here as WKS, ethanol inhibits thiamine uptake in the gastrointestinal system. So what that means is people who are chronic alcoholics, even if they're getting sufficient amounts of thiamine, may have lower amounts of thiamine in their blood and in their tissues. As such, people with Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome have very similar phenotypes to people with beriberi, even though supplementation with dietary thiamine may not be effective because it's an absorption defect. Some of the symptoms associated with beriberi and Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome are listed below. Take a moment and pause the video and try to understand why do you think some of these symptoms might be associated with lack of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? So let's go through one example, exercise intolerance. As I noted, in order for aerobic metabolism of glucose, you need to go through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and into the TCA cycle. In the absence of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex activity, you're less able to completely extract energy out of glucose than perform aerobic metabolism. 
Therefore, during exercise, you're going to be exhausted much more quickly, and you're going to be intolerant to exercise. When you undergo anaerobic metabolism, you generate lactic acid, which is why lactic acid and pyruvate build up. Neuronal cells require large amounts of oxidative phosphorylation in order to function, which is why generally diseases that are associated with impaired oxidative phosphorylation are also associated with neurodegeneration and neurological symptoms such as confusion, numbness, and poor reflexes. So let's think about treatment. How would you treat both beriberi and Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? Again, pause the video and think about it for a minute. Treatment for beriberi is reasonably straightforward. It just requires additional thiamine, either through fortified foods or through vitamin supplementation. However, because in Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, the problem is thiamine uptake, additional dietary thiamine may not be helpful. In that case, generally people are provided with intravenous supply of thiamine, which can bypass the absorption defect in the gastrointestinal tract. A large number of vitamins and minerals are able to support a very large number of enzymes, and they do this by serving as cofactors. These cofactors are critical to the function of those enzymes. If you don't have enough of the cofactor because you don't have enough of the vitamin or mineral precursor, then that enzyme isn't going to be able to function correctly. That means you may end up with a buildup of the substrates, and you may not be able to effectively complete the metabolism you want. The example we went through here was pyruvate dehydrogenase. You need to have sufficient amounts of vitamin B1 in order to convert glucose into carbon dioxide. Deficiencies of vitamins and minerals reduce the activity of these enzymes. This can result in a whole variety of metabolic dysfunction. So if you can identify which enzymes require which vitamins on a metabolic pathway, you can predict the metabolic consequences of a deficiency of that cofactor by predicting what would happen if that enzyme wasn't functional. We talked about two diseases, beriberi and Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Both of these are caused by functional deficiencies in thiamine although the root cause of beriberi and Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome are quite different. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is the gateway to aerobic respiration. So therefore, when you have a deficiency of pyruvate dehydrogenase activity, either due to beriberi or WKS, this can result in lactic acidosis, impaired cardiac function, exercise intolerance, and neurodegeneration. There's a large number of B vitamins, and they are important for a very large number of enzymatic reactions but we need to have sufficient amounts of those B vitamins to make the precursors that can serve as cofactors to support that metabolism. Understanding why somebody might be deficient in a particular cofactor involves thinking about all the various aspects of their diet. For example, here we talked about how in WKS, even though you may have sufficient amounts of thiamine, you may still end up being thiamine deficient because you're unable to absorb it. There can also be variation in the ability to convert the vitamin into its functional cofactor. For example, the pyrophosphorylation of thiamine could be impaired, and that would impair the amount of TPP that's present. So understanding the metabolism that is required of these vitamins and understanding how these vitamin-dependent cofactors affect our overall biochemistry is important for understanding the pathophysiology of vitamin deficiency.